Aproveitando o break do seu podcast pra perguntar. Será que você sabe... Quem é ele? Esse tá de rock and roll. Trident apresenta um feat de gerações com Rita Lee e Luísa Sonza. Eu procuro estar por dentro, doutor, dessa nova geração. Mas minha filha não me leva a sério, doutor. Ela fica cheia de mistério com esse tal de rock and roll. Quando terminar seu podcast, já aproveita pra ouvir esse feat aqui no Spotify. Trident no Rock in Rio 40 anos. Masca e destrava seu rock and roll. It's the Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. From approximately coast to coast, it's another edition of Project Audion. Barry Groby here with the generic radio workshop, standing here in the cavernous Bob and Ray World Headquarters studios. Now, if you don't know who Bob and Ray are, well, then you're in for a treat, because you're going to get to discover their quirky, deadpan, offbeat sense of humor. You see, Bob Elliott and Ray Goulding are actually a very important stop on a journey that directly connects old-time radio to modern disc jockeys and even to Saturday Night Live, David Letterman, and others. Elliot and Goulding in the late 1940s were two young announcers at a Boston radio station who, so the story goes, were thrown together one day in the studio when a baseball broadcast was rained out. Well, something clicked because they formed a professional partnership that lasted for the next half century. Their early shows were completely improvised When they moved to networks, they started writing parodies of popular shows, soap operas and the like. Bob and Ray could be heard on NBC, CBS, the Mutual Broadcasting System, and others from the 50s and the 60s, even to NPR in the 1980s. Along the way, they also showed up on television and records, uh, commercials, and a very successful two-man Broadway show. So whether you don't know your Wally Ballou from your Arthur Sturdley, or you can actually recite the entire Komodo Dragon sketch from memory, enjoy this collection of bits from the Bob and Ray show at its mid-century best. We now return you to our regularly scheduled broadcast. Time now for another matinee with Bob and Ray. That's enough of that. We have so much to do today that we're a little beside ourselves. We've been snapping at our assistants here all morning. You've been real cranky today. And all afternoon. And it's because we have so much to do today. You and want um, the cannon over here. Yes, that's right. Please. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing today, for one thing, is installing the famous Bob and Ray cannon. Now, that's the automatic cannon that fires and goes off automatically when a guest or music or... Excuse me, Ray, would you hand me that Stilson wrench, please? Stilson wrench? Right. Is, is this a Stilson wrench right here? No, 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 it's the other one. Oh, that's right. There you are. Uh, say, that's a big wrench, isn't it? Well, it's a big cannon. This cannon, you see, fires off or is loaded with two dozen country fresh eggs that will be sprayed on any guest who irritates lovable old Bob and Ray. If the program gets to a point where it's beginning to grate on us, you'll hear the cannon go off. And that can be whatever is happening. If, if we, we should discover a, a, a new singer or, or he and she should be singing and we don't like it, the cannon will go off. The cannon will definitely go off. And, and we have a circle painted on the floor where the guest is instructed to stand. It makes it a lot easier for the automatic cannon to hit the guest. I think it's all right now. I think we need a test run here. Would anyone like to come up here and uh, irritate us for a little while? Webb, how about you? You're usually pretty good at that. All right, all right. You, uh, you want to stand right there in the center of that spot? Uh, right here? Right, right there, where the painted circle is. All right. Bob and Ray, you are to be a couple of cheapskates. <laughs> Come on, Webb, you can irritate us more than that. Uh, Bob and Ray, <laughs> where did you get that haircut? 
<laughs> come on, come on. Make it worse than that. Uh, Bobby Ray, uh, did you ever catch your faith in the record changer? All right, that's it. Wow. Oh, boy. That a uh, new suit you were wearing? I'm covered with eggs. Two dozen country fresh eggs all over. That's the price you pay for irritating us. What's a good way to get egg off a suit? I think just plain old cold water is good. Cold water always, because the hot water will tend to cook it a little. Well, gosh, I feel like an omelet. I'm going to run along. Good luck to you, Webley Webster. Irritating assistant here at the Bob and Ray Show. The cannon did work pretty well, though, didn't it? It certainly did. <laughs> And now, for another episode of The Gathering Dusk, the heartwarming story of a bedridden girl who ignores her illness to be overcome by the indifference of the world around her. As we look in on the Bessinger household today, Edna is resting on the banister of the basement stairway. It's mid-morning, and Mr. Fundy, the chief of the Red Boiling Springs Alcohol Tax Investigation Unit, is just entering. Oh, it's you, Red Boiling Springs Alcohol Tax Investigation Unit Chief Fundy. It was good of you to come so soon. Well, things were pretty quiet around the office this morning, Miss Bessinger. In fact, I was just playing a game of Scrabble with my assistant when you called, and, and I came. Oh, is that so? I play quite a good deal of Scrabble myself. As a matter of fact, a bunch of girls here in the neighborhood have a Thursday evening Scrabble club. I'm the sergeant at arms. Well, I think it's a nice game. I enjoy it. Oh, I do. Just last Thursday, I hit the word Quirtus on a triple. I picked up something like 45 points on it. Quirtus. What does Quirtus mean, Miss Bessinger? Well, it doesn't mean anything. We have a club rule that you can use any word with a nice sound to it. You know, Quirtus, Swidmore, Splorch, Plovit, things like that. Well, doesn't that kind of take the fun out of the game if you can just make up words? Well, we don't make them up. They just don't happen to be in the dictionary. I see. Emma Schroeder is going on vacation next week. I Maybe you'd like to take her place at our Thursday night games while she's gone. It would give you a chance to meet a lot of attractive girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the invitation, Miss Bessinger, but I do have something else on Thursday night. What? I don't care. Anything. Well, suit yourself. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you didn't call me over here to talk about Scrabble, Miss Bessinger. Is there something I can do for you? Yes. Yes, there is, Red Boiling Springs Alcohol Tax Investigation Unit Chief Fundy. It's about the gentleman I've rented the front bedroom to. I was cleaning up in there this morning, and I found this bottle of hooch. Now, I don't want a man who drinks bootleg booze living in my house. Well, what makes you think this is bootleg liquor, Miss Bessinger? Well, you can see for yourself there's no tax stamp on the bottle. And when I took a swig of it, it almost blew the top of my head off. It's hooch, all right. I just hope he hasn't sent up a s set up a still someplace here in the house. Well, uh, didn't you read the label on this bottle before you drank the stuff? It's, it's aftershave lotion. Well, I don't see how aftershave lotion could pack such, pack such a wallop like that. You sure it isn't for a phony label? Of course, I'm sure. It was probably the witch hazel in the stuff that gave you the kick. Well, it certainly is a relief to know that I'm not harboring a criminal, Red Boiling Springs Alcohol Tax Investigation Unit Chief Fundy. I think I'll just kill the rest of this bottle to celebrate this good news. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My stars! I almost feel as if I'm no longer standing in the gathering dusk. But if the mysterious man in the upstairs bedroom is not a bootlegger, who could he really be? 
Join us next time when an even more baffling development occurs in The Gathering Dusk. It's surprise time for me now on Matinee with Bob and Ray because I haven't had the opportunity to meet and talk to my next guest. Sit down, sir. Would you tell our audience your name and where you're from? Hilo P. Whitcomb. Where are you from? From Glen Falls. New York? New York. What do you do? I am the president and recording... Secretary? Recording secretary? Secretary of the S T O A. What does that stand for? The Slow Talkers of America. America. We believe in. Speaking slowly. So that you'll never be misunderstood. So that our ideas, our thoughts, words, and opinions will never be misunderstood. Will always be understood. Comprehended. We are here in New York City, in New York City for our annual convention membership convention convention. Oh. 200 members and 50 members seven members speaking slowly slowly as opposed to the members of the F T O A T O A O A A The Fast Talkers of America Talkers of America You're making me a nervous wreck, sir. Of America We have a credo Just a moment. Oh, I seem to be... Covered in eggs? Wet. Oh, gosh, just cut to a commercial, please. We then asked to make the following announcement by Bob and Ray Enterprises Incorporated, which makes all kinds of gifts for the home, club, and office. Folks, we guessed wrong on Columbus Day. We got overstocked on Columbus-type sailing ships because people didn't buy them as expected. You win! Yes, folks, right now we have 22 Nina, 45 Pinta, and 134 Santa Maria-type full-size sailing vessels, but we're practically going to give away. You can see them at anchor just to the left of the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Each vessel accommodates up to 135 people. Have fun on a weekend cruise with all your friends. Visit the Festival of Britain, the 2000th birthday of the city of Paris. Only 135 days to Europe. Four and one half months of an exhilarating days at sea. 19 weeks of carefree, sunny sailing over the briny deep. Just write to Isabella, New York, and say, I want to backtrack Columbus's footsteps. Then row over to the left of the Brooklyn Navy Yard and board your own ship. It's up sail, downstream, and off to Europe. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like a good spot here, Tex. Yeah, 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 all right. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, hold up, now. Yeah, nice boy, nice boy. Yeah. Uh, which one of us is going to get off first? Uh, here, well, uh, I'm going to... Let me try to get down first. All right. Whoa, hold, hold up, hold up. Hold, 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 hold still, hold still. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute. My foot. My foot's caught in a stirrup. Uh, let me, let me ride over there. Uh, All right. Pull your, pull your feet out. Hold on. Here I come. Oh, oh. Now, 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 wait a minute. Well, all right. There you go. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, hold, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Now, hold up now. There. Hold up there. Hold, hold up. I'm facing right. the wrong way. Ah, you swung right around. Look at that. Maybe you better get down and maybe you can help me off. All right. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, let me, uh... I'll ride over back and see if I can help you. Yeah, yeah. Back him up. Back him up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. 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 Hold Oh, I wish I could help you, but I'm facing the wrong way. Wait, wait a minute. I'm coming back now. Hold up. Here I come. Oh, all right, now. I'll bend down. I'll see if I can... Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I got an idea. Right over under that tree there and grab hold of that limb and then just hang there and have the horse go out from under you. All right. Here, go oh, ahead, no. Right. Over there, horse. Oh, oh, go over oh, that limb. Okay. Come yeah. on, now. Hang on. Hang on, now. I am. Wait a minute. If I let go, I'll be ten feet from the ground. Oh, yeah, that's right. Probably be too far to fall there. Come mm. over and get me, will you? All right, all right, I'm coming this way. Come on. Over. Come on, Let's go, now, boy. Come on. Come on. Hold still now. Come on. All right, now, now, I'll grab your horse and, and lead her back. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Oh, now. I'm getting hungry. <sighs> yeah, I am too. I'm going to try this time by putting my right foot down first. Oh, I dropped my hat. Oh, well, there goes my mess cup. Well, that's down anyway. Well, we're going to have to eat here, no doubt about it. Yeah. Wait a minute, I'll, I'll get down. Wait, 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 what do you say we eat on our horses, huh? Wait a minute, I'm down. Well, all right now. No, I'm not either. Oh. No, I'm not either. Thought for a minute I was down. Whoa, 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 do you have any ideas, Tex? Yeah, I'm gonna eat right here. Sitting right where I am. Well, I can't eat this way. My mess cup's gone. Whoa, 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 easy. Whoa, 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 Hold now, steady now. Come on, come on now. What'd you bring bring to eat anyway? Them Parker House rolls? Rich creamery butter? Oh, it looks good. I wish I could get down from this horse. Yeah. I can't do it. I just can't do it. No, I can't either. Maybe we can sleep here overnight. You know, wake up fresh in the morning and we can get off. I'm going to try it once more. Right. I'm going to start by taking my foot out of the stirrup. Uh -huh. Now, you keep an eye on me and see how I do this. All right. All right. Give it a try there. And if I do it right, then you follow. Good. Then we can eat on the ground like cowboys should. Right, right, around a campfire. Never. Gonna put my right foot. Oh, wait oh, a minute. Oh. I'm in your stirrup. Oh, look at that. We're worse than we ever were now. Oh, yeah, now you're on my horse. Oh, oh. no, 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 oh, hey, no, no, hey, no, come on now, oh, come horse. On, come on, come on, on back now. Wait, oh, come, come on. on. Whoa. Oh, horse. And now, for all of you out there, this is Tom Lowell, your world-renowned travel man, here to answer the questions sent in by travel buffs on this, The World of Travel. I'm ready if you are, Ben Binder. I'm ready, Tom Lowell. Ready with your questions? Fine, Ben. Go ahead. All right. Um, Mr. Lowell, is Africa safe? Yes, Ben. Uh, Mr. Lowell, what's the cheapest way to travel? Well, a deportation proceeding beats them all. 
but I guess the next cheapest way to, is to uh, sneak aboard a ship. And when you're caught, tell the press that you never carry more than $50 on your person at any time. I see. Well now, Mr. Lowell, what is the maximum allowable luggage weight for each passenger on Skycraft Airlines? Well, Skycraft flies all over the world, and to make things easy for the passengers, their maximum allowable luggage weight comes to four pounds. Why so little, Mr. Lowell? Well, they feature the new lead fuselage for passengers' protection, and uh, it weighs considerable. Well, it would seem like a plane like that would have trouble taking off. Well, we use runway six at Idlewild, and that runway goes all the way to National Airport in Washington. And usually the plane becomes airborne some eight or nine miles away from Washington, so there's plenty of room for a nice takeoff. Well, uh, yes. So which is the best airline for weight allowance? Any of the airlines which use lots of aluminum in the manufacture of their aircraft. Now, Mr. Lowell, what is the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? None that I can see. The alligator might possibly make a better shoe, but I'm not sure. And what's the most interesting sight to be seen in the British Isles, Mr. Lowell? The Guarding of the Change, which takes place at the Bank of England. It's a very moving ceremony, one you don't want to miss. Good to know. Now, which is the best language to speak when visiting Sweden, Mr. Lowell. Interesting result. Spanish is the best language to speak when visiting Sweden. In the world of travel, what are sea legs? <laughs> I don't know. Where can one see the upcoming 1956 Olympic Games? They could be seen in London in 1952. I see. Well, Mr. Lowell, is it possible for a person to walk across the United States on foot? Not with Hawaii in the picture, it isn't. And now a question from a slightly skeptical listener who wants to know, is it true that in some parts of the world, fried grasshoppers are a delicacy? Fried grasshoppers is a highly delectable dish in many countries. But a note of warning, order them well done. Very often an underdone grasshopper will get to your salad before you do. And Tom, a listener wants to know, what is a fjord? I believe a fjord is a Norwegian car. Now that's just not true. Oh, my goodness, my favorite time. In fact, a fjord is a Swedish car. I'm sorry, but people are counting on you for accurate information, Mr. Lowell. Actions have consequences, you know. I'm sure you'll want to go back to your World of Travel headquarters and ponder that. But thank you anyway, Tom Lowell, for answering Travel Man for your much-needed information. Sarah, dry cleaner here. It's time for Garish Summit, the unfolding story of intrigue among the socially prominent families of Garish Summit. There in stately splendor, far removed from the squalid vid village below, they fight their petty battles of power and money. As our action begins, Miss Agatha is staring thoughtfully out the music room window when... <laughs> Suddenly she turns and speaks. There's a strange car stopping out in front, Rodney. I wouldn't exactly call it strange, Mother. Of course, I never cared for rally stripes on a Rolls Royce myself. I don't mean strange in that sense. I just never saw it before. Now a strange man is getting out. I agree, Mother. He is an odd-looking duck. Ears set too low. No! No, you're such a wimp, Rodney. You never understand a word I say to you. Come in. It's open. Over here in the music room.
Now back here in the conversation pit behind the conservatory. Uh, quite a place you've got here. Thank you. We like it. We have 46,200 square feet here in the main house. Then the triplets live over in the annex, and that has... Oh, be quiet, Rodney. Whoever this man is, I'm sure he doesn't want to hear you cite a bunch of boring figures. You may be right, Mother. Introductions would be more in order. <clears throat> I'm the wealthy but spineless young executive, Rodney Murchfield, and this is my dowager mother, Agatha. Uh, pleased to meet you, Miss Agatha. I've been looking forward to the moment. Uh, you see... I'm your long-lost eldest son, Skippy. Now, wait a minute, you sleazy imposter. I'm an only child and sole heir to the Murchfield Billions. Mother, tell him you never had another son. Well, I'm just trying to remember. That would have been about 30 years ago, and there were so many events going on at the country club then, it's hard to keep track of everything. Mother, he's obviously feeding you a cock-and-bull story. Oh, it's no cock-and-bull story, pal. I got proof, see? Look, here's a picture of me when I was four. Mom took me to see Santa Claus at Gucci's. What does that prove? There's no one in the picture but you and Santa Claus. Well, of course not. A guy wouldn't want his mother in the picture when he's talking to Santa Claus. Apparently, you take me for a complete fool. Yeah, more or less. I'm on to your little game. You fortune hunters are all alike. You learn how Grandpa Murchfield was exploring for oil on this land in 1912 when he struck lead. <clears throat> Proved to be the mother load. A rich vein of drab gray metal as far as the eye could see. Oh, knock it off, Rodney. You always tell that story as if you had something to do with it. Well, sorry, Mother. I guess I get carried away with family pride. After all, he was my grandfather. Well, he was mine, too. I remember he used to take me on his knee and say, Skippy, someday it'll be your job to get the lead out. He couldn't have said that to you. He died before you were born. Oh, really? Well, maybe I heard it somewhere else, then. Besides, no one in this family would ever have a name like Skippy. Well, maybe that's just a nickname. His real name could be something more socially acceptable, like Caldwell or E.W. Mother, believe me, this man is a fraud. Ah, Caldwell. Sounds okay to me. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's who I am. Caldwell Marchfield. See, Mother, he's playing right into your hands. No, I don't think so. I always liked the name Caldwell, but no one outside the family could have known that. It's good to have you home, Caldwell. Now come along and meet the others. I wish you'd reconsider this, Mother. Oh, I already know part of the family, Mom. Like, for instance, Rodney's ravishingly beautiful wife, Jennifer. <laughs> I know her well. Yes, indeed. I know her real well. Will this unknown man in the ready-to-wear suit be accepted as a Merchfield without further questions? Can Jennifer supply some of the missing answers? And what about the butler who failed to answer the door when the stranger arrived? Perhaps we'll learn more next time when we hear Agatha say... No, I didn't write you out of my will, Rodney. You were never in it. That's in the next episode of Garish Summit. Well, Bob, it's that time again, the finals of the annual Bob and Ray Spelling Bee Contest. Do you happen to have the regional winners? Our three semifinalists arrived here in New York last week. I wonder if you would step up to our microphones and identify yourselves. You are... My Betsy W. Ross from Fredericksburg, Maryland. Yes. That's right. Russell Plume, are you here? Russell couldn't be here. Well, Russell was the Southern States champion, and who are you? I'm Benjamin Franklin from Altoona, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to substitute for him. Well, who do you represent? I'll represent the southern states, if I may. And our last contestant from the West Coast? Paul G. Revere. Paul G. Revere. From Elmont, Utah. 
All right, you two gentlemen and the lady are the regional winners, and as you know, we are going to give you one round of words in the first go-around in our national semifinals. If you answer correctly, you will hear... And if you answer wrong, it's... Now, the words will be chosen out of this barrel, which has been turned over so that they are all mixed up. And I think we will let our lady go first. Miss Ross, will you pick your first word? All right, here you are. Your word, Miss Ross, is Paleolithic. Paleolithic. Pertaining to an era in the development of this earth. Capital P-A-L-E-O-L-I-T-H-I-R. I-T-I-M. No, I'm sorry that last letter should have been C, Miss Ross. Better luck next time in the second round. Let's move along with Mr. Plume, or rather, Mr. Plume's proxy. Franklin. Mr. Benjamin Franklin. You will have to reach in and hand me the word. Okay, here you are. The word you have chosen from our barrel of words is interfenestration, the spacing of windows. Interfenestration, I-N-T-E-R-F-E-N-E-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-B. I'm sorry you missed it by one letter, Mr. Franklin. The last letter is N. You'll take your seat next to Miss Ross, and our final semifinalist is Mr. Revere of Elmont, Utah. Will you hand me your word? Sure. Your word is the interrogative... Who? Now, wait a minute. Give him a chance. Well, I had a real tough one. I'm sorry, but you choose your own words. Who? W-H-O. W-H-O is right. What kind of a badger game is this? I had Paleolithic and he had interfenestration. And so that makes Paul Revere the winner of round one. And this big lunkhead gets who? And we'll be back with round two after this commercial. Men, have you looked at your shoelaces lately? Everyone else does. Are they dirty, frayed, or lacking tips? If so, why not stop by John's Shoelace Emporium and get a cheerful free estimate? John will personally explain how his unique one-stop service works. You simply come in, enter one of the little booths numbered one through two. John will remove your laces and wash them in hot sudsy water, then pat them dry on a warm Turkish towel. Your shoelaces are then hand-ironed by a little old lady. If you need new metal tips, John will attend to that before returning them to you. That's John's Shoelace Emporium in the little brick building with a crooked chimney over behind the parking lot next to the 5 and 10. The price for all this service? Only five seventy-five per lace. We're back now with our three regional champions, Miss Ross, Mr. Revere, and Mr. Franklin. They're all ready to go round in our second deciding go round of our Grand National Semi-Final Spelling Bee. Our contestants are still bickering among themselves about the unfortunate fact that two of them drew hard words and one of them drew an easy word in the first round. Remember, for a right spelling... and for a wrong spelling... Here we go with our second round, and our lady, Miss Betsy Ross, is first. Will you reach into the barrel? Here you are. This time, Miss Ross, and this is the deciding word for you, your word is propinquity, a nearness. Propinquity? How come he got who, and I get words like that? You pick the words yourself, ma'am. Well, what's it mean? It means a nearness. <sighs> Propinquity. P-R-O-P-I-N-G. Oh, no, it looks like a G the way some people write, but it's wrong the way you spelled it. So I'm afraid you're out, Miss Ross, but our congratulations for putting up a good fight. I didn't put up any good fight. I'm just trying to save my skin. Let's move to the regional champion from South, being represented by a proxy, Mr. Benjamin Franklin. I go along with Miss Ross to a degree. It seems like she and I drew the long straws. Well, you did get a difficult word as opposed to an easy one for Mr. Revere in the first round. Let's see if you can do any better this time. You have chosen the word proximity. That's a pretty difficult word, too. Please, 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 Miss Ross. 
proximity, P R O X I M I T. No, no, no. You were going to spell it wrong. I could tell. L B P R O X I M I T Y would be your word. What do you mean you thought he was going to spell it wrong? You had that buzzer going before he had two letters out. I don't know what's going on. If our West Coast champion, Mr. Paul G. Revere, can spell his word correctly, he remains. <laughs> they are some sore losers there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they are, Mr. Revere. You have chosen your word, and if you can spell it correctly, that means you are the standard bearer, the champion of our semifinals, and we'll go on to our final round in New York. The word you have chosen is... Far, the opposite of near. Wait a minute. Are you related or what? Go ahead, Mr. Revere, and please, Miss Ross, be polite. Far, F-A-R. That's right. I want to congratulate you, and I know that Ray does too. Tell us what you do, Mr. Revere. I own a theater out in Elmont. One of the most popular ones in Elmont, I understand. We're certainly looking forward to you fellows when you come out there. <laughs> well, we certainly appreciated the booking when we heard from you. Thanks for being in our semi-final spelling bee. And you'll go on to the finals, and I think your luck will be pretty good, Mr. Revere. Where's that cannon thing? I'd like to see if Bob and Ray can spell E-G-G. -G. Oh, good thing we used up our daily quota of country fresh eggs, eh, Ray? A very good thing indeed. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And so, until next time, this is Ray Goulding saying, right if you get work. And Bob Elliott reminding you to hang by your thumbs. Good, good night. night. This is the Finley Quality Network. Oh, God, that's annoying. If you enjoyed this Project Audio show, let us know. Like it, share it, or drop us an email. Until next time, thanks for listening. Are you in the mood for a good laugh? <laughs> or maybe a good scream? How about some childlike wonder? Or a thought-provoking mystery? Then get your ears ready for a treat, because the Mutual Audio Drama Network presents shows every day for your enjoyment. Each day is a different genre featuring the talents of a huge pool of audio drama masters. Oh, and some clever comedy creators as well. <laughs> Subscribe to the Mutual feed and get them all, or choose the genres you really love. Ooh. You'll find the Mutual Audio Network at all your favorite places, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, EarBuddies, Podcast-O-Rama, Casting Call, Podcast, and wherever quality shows are found. Okay, I made a few of those up. Or simply go online to MutualAudioNetwork.com. And of course, it's all free. free. The free. Mutual Audio Drama Network. Listen and imagine together. Maintaining social distancing, of course.